Hello guys, this is Dr. Bass and uh, tonight I'm showing you uh, a quick update on uh, the uh, range extender which is this uh, big battery which comes from a ZF, uh, well not a ZF but uh, a uh, 2015 uh, motorcycle so this is a ZF 12.5 uh, battery pack that I will use uh, standalone uh, as a range extender and uh, to achieve that I had to uh, use this kind of a good adapter here this is the uh, zero charge adapter and the schematics can be found also on the, the uh, zero manual website so you see here um, this is the uh, standard uh, zero charger the quick charger and this is the uh, big battery uh, connector in fact this connector is the same kind of pin out on the uh, the monolith as well as on the uh, zero brick i verify that uh, only a few pins are uh, different for the uh, uh, loop back connection to detect if there is one uh, charge tank or a power tank in fact not charging but power tank and also uh, between the 2013 and 2012 the CAN bus pin were swapped a little bit with the high voltage and these things so that's why the uh, 2000 13 and 2014 are not compatible together so um, the difference that I made is instead of using a battery pack I've used a uh, uh, to generate the 4.5 volt or about I've used a DC DC converter a small square DC DC converter that take in fact the um, I use one of those pins which is called the low power B plus which is exactly the voltage of the pack through a uh, little fuse and uh, uh, from this pin to the negative uh, I'm uh, uh, supplying the input of the DC DC to generate the 5 volt that I have through a 10 kilo ohm resistor and it's work it's it's 10 kilo ohm some are uh, talking about 100 kilo ohm but in fact for this one it's uh, 10 and it's working so that's what you see here I have a switch and this small DC DC converter and the uh, those two pins that are tied together here you can see the loop here exactly so it's working and I've added a uh, small LED here that is supplied by the output of the DC DC the low voltage part so it uh, informed me that the contactor is energized because I don't want to uh, forget the contactor on while I don't use this uh, monolith. So in the previous video, I think I said that this adapter was only compatible with the zero brick and uh, not on this one. But in fact, that's my fault. I forget the low voltage uh, B plus fuse, which is the fuse for the uh, uh, main voltage battery, but uh, lower current. Uh, I forgot to add this fuse <laughs> so I had no high voltage here no possible to generate the uh, 5 volt from the uh, DC DC converter because there was no low power B plus voltage to supply it <laughs> so now it's working so as you can see I can use this zero monolith standalone and it's working well I can discharge and I can charge it so right now I'm using one of those TC charger the 3.3 kilowatts and the uh, small interface that uh, Daniel Montero uh, built they are working very nice and if some of you are interested I have couples of these uh, still available so right now I've charged for 1.4 kilowatt hour and you see the actual voltage versus the target voltage and the time here so it's just a simple uh, CAN bus interface and this part here is just my pre-charge or my uh, circuit breaker between the uh, high current output and the charger because it's always safe to use a fuse but instead of having a fuse I have a <laughs> dual uh, DC breaker here and I also have those big pre-charge resistor it's overkill I know but it's working <laughs> I have plenty of these so why not and to show you the charging current because you see it's a 3.3 kilowatt of charging I will just grab one of those uh, big cable or small in fact it's exactly the same and I, oh I will make the uh, zero because it's always oh it's already at zero <laughs> anyway so 
minus 28.6 well I know it's different reading depending on if it's uh, I twisted these wait a minute okay all right so grab to the negative 29 amp so actually I have 29 amp at 113 volts so uh, if you do the calculation it's about 3.1 3.2 kilowatts something like that maybe it's uh, depending on the uh, because this is a 220 volt I have my 220 volt here so 220 uh, and maybe it's not exactly 220 oh, well 240 but maybe it's 220 and it's uh, in uh, lower voltage uh, input mode so it doesn't give all the power but uh, oh well, I think I, all, uh, I ever made a video about that, the efficiency of those. You can watch these on my channel. So it's working very well. And in fact, that big monolith is about uh, 170 pounds. So that's quite heavy. My plan is to use or to build a single wheeler uh, motorcycle trailer. So I will use this pack in the middle. And back to here, I will maybe use the back wheel of my 0XU frame or 0S the drag racing bike I'm not sure what what's the future for that bike from now because I got uh, interesting uh, speed and uh, acceleration so now maybe it's time for other projects so I will have the back wheel here supporting this big battery pack and I want to have the lower center of gravity as possible and then the front part will be tied to the rear of the motorcycle. I still not figured out how I will do it, if I do it through the uh, rear swing arm or if I do it uh, through the uh, back of the motorcycle where the license plate and these things are with the kind of a harness. Anyway, so I hope you appreciate it and if some of you uh, observe that uh, back to it I have a 11.4 monolith uh, battery pack and uh, I wanted to put those two on the back of the motorcycle but hey hey that's about 350 pound back of the zero motor to the zero motorcycle on a trailer and I think it's quite dangerous doing that so and you will uh, comment on that I'm sure <laughs> so yeah going with this one will be safer so right now the operation I'm doing is I'm charging it to uh, put it on the uh, electronic load that I have. I have a uh, 1800 watt electronic load good for, for up to 500 volt DC. I will just bench it to know what's the remaining capacity of this one because it's a 2015 and it's now six years old. And in case of your, uh, some of you are wondering, I have this brick here which is a 2014 that I tested in fact this brick is a kind of a Frankenstein brick because it's actually a 2000, uh, for, uh, 2013 battery with a 2014 BMS because the 2013 had MOSFET to uh, conduct uh, or not the output instead of a contactor and those were uh, uh, welded or if I can say shorted so uh, the output was always on so what I did is replace the BMS and replace this connector so it's now a 2014 and what I've measured is quite interesting you see it lost a lot of capacity because at C uh, out of 2 which mean at 12.5 amp which is half of the uh, number for the capacity of that uh, battery here I've measured 1.87 kilowatt hour which is like you know it's like end of life it's a uh, <laughs> 80 percent or less and the nominal voltage was still okay at that C rate I've uh, calculated it and it's uh, 102 volt so the nominal voltage of the pack didn't drop but what is strange is that the internal resistance of this pack is uh, quite high you know I have like uh, 100 milliohm and I've tested that with my very very big hair dryer here <laughs> you see that's a 18 kilowatt hair dryer that I'm using to discharge my battery pack so in fact it's just 10 hair dryer tied together in parallel or in series parallel I have different combination of connections here and when I connect that I'm draining about 108 amp to this battery pack and the voltage goes from 
Strangely, it goes from uh, uh, 114 to 95 volt uh, quite uh, rapidly. So it's flag. Uh, it's a good flag uh, for informing me that uh, this battery pack have uh, solid aging, but I might use it for a lower rate discharge for e-bike or something like that. So guys, again, thanks for watching. I hope you appreciate it. And uh, I will keep you informed on the next project coming. So, last screenshot on the project. And uh, I hope you've been inspired or you've been uh, interested in uh, all these stuff that I'm making. So, if you like, thumbs up and subscribe. Okay, bye-bye.